We're at Vakuma 2021. And we're going to be looking at some of the innovations that Fanuc have brought here to the show. Now, Colin spent the last 24 hours researching, uh, interviewing, and finding out about how this technology works and what's been improved. So this is an injection molding machine here, which is principally what Fakuma is about. We're going to start at where the process starts here, Colin. What have we got? What's going on? I just on? want to go back very quickly. Fakuma 2021, 1,500 exhibitors. So huge range of exhibitors. Absolutely amazing. The halls are absolutely chock of with people. It, but it this has is, been busy. This is slightly different. So it's injection molding with a difference. So LSR, so it's silicon. So if you think, I know you're probably not a very good DIY bloke, but when you're thinking silicon at home, grout it around your bath, it's as simple as that. Liquid form in there, in there, you mix the two together and hopefully get it up on the screen there. So yeah, one mixing the two together. This is a, I know it looks it's a complex machine, but it's an off the shelf machine. So it's not a fanic piece of equipment this isn't. Okay, so hang on, so, so basically you've got two different drums here. What, what's yep. the difference between what's in one and what's in the Just other? Like, if you think of, you know the glue where you mix the two glues together, it's like that, so that when they come together, they'll then be the final, pro the final product. Right, so you can't get the final product without mixing them. You Is need to mix saying? the two together, and different mixes give different re different solutions. Okay, right, so where so are we going next, the, and this, this is where is it the, starts? An off-the-shelf product, it's not a fan of product, but they, this is the one they're using. So if we go around here, so just to reiterate, it's a RoboShot I SIB, so it's the latest machine, the latest injection molding machine, but this one is slightly different. The difference is LSR, which is a silicon, so it's a different process. Right, so that's what we've just seen at the back there, is where the silicon is mixed. So it's coming in through these pipes here. The key to this process, so we've got, yeah, we've got the camera just doing that. The key to this process is what's here, where well, you can see the Fanuc 032. Okay. Now this is a, it's a screw. Now the other injection molders have screws, and you can change those with different materials, different amounts of components, different size of components. But what you'll notice is, and this is, oh, I'm trying to cover it all in one go, we can't do that, but touch screen, and what you've got is, we go to the temperature. On an injection molding, you normally start around about 50, 60 degrees to dry the pellets out, depending on the material. Then it's going to get hotter, hotter, hotter. So 270, 280 as an example. But here, it's coming in in liquid form, so it's keeping it around the 24 degrees, and it's actually heating it in the mold, so it's reverse operation. Right, so this is where the silicon is going to be coming through, yep. and this is the temperature that it's at. Exactly. But it's not heating it to the level where it's going to be used in the injection molding. Not, but it will be, if we go to here, if I can get this correct, let me just, so again, it's reversing. So the other one's going from about 50 to 200. This is going from two, about 20 to 165 degrees in there. So it's heating it to set the, the resin. So what's the difference then between this silicon and what they're doing in the other injection molding machines and why do you use one or the other? Different applications and this is an automotive application. They did sil silicon and it needs to be slightly flexible. They're using this for medical, for seals for example. So it's just different applications. Okay, Perfect now we'll see, that we'll see this press tool opening and closing in That's a right, minute. That's right, we get I'm the sure. timing right. Uh, but the applet, oh we here go. we go, that is perfect. So we've got two being made in here then, have Correct. we? Correct. But you can see the setup, we'll come to the robot, the automation in a minute, because it's not just a picking up and holding it, we'll watch out, we'll see that and we the can other see the though. silicon there, of Absolutely, course. Absolutely, yeah. yep. What's the tonnage on this machine then? So this one is a 150, this range will, at the moment will go to 220, next year it's going to 450 tonnes. So, I'll, I'll basically, in simple terms, a lot of pressure. And is the cooling of the, the part done in there as well, in process, how does that work? It'll be, that I'm not 100% sure of, to be honest with you, but it's heating up to the 165. I'm assuming. So there must be a cooling mechanism, it, yeah, with water cool. Now, these machines are electric, though, aren't they? That which, is, which gives exactly improved it. efficiency. Uh, compared to a majority of machines on the market, which are all hydraulic, they are, if we keep walking around here, this is about 70% more efficient, which is key in this environment. And you, see, you know, electricity prices, fuel prices going up by the hour, so this is, and they're recycling that as well, so different processes are actually regenerating electricity to reuse it really, in the machine. Really, so it's a very green environment. Now Absolutely. here we can see the finished part, so the robot essentially is waiting to pick out uh, well, the part and, and putting a new well, one. If we, if we watch this at the moment, so the robot's going in, it's a slightly different um, setup on the, on the arm there, it goes in, it takes out the components, but it also takes out the cold sprue, which is where the silicon is coming in, so the, the small little bits at the top, but it's, it's photographing it, because you don't want any of those components left in the mould, because that could be catastrophic almost. Oh, okay, so the bits at the top there then, they, they, are gonna, they, they have to be in there, otherwise the process will come to Yeah, a because that's where the silicon comes in, it injects it via that, the cold, cold runner, yeah. which is part of the process, but the actual finished component is there, but they must, they, it's absolutely 
and it's almost imperative. like it's almost like a vision system, isn't it? Basically? It is a vision system. Yeah. So it take a photograph, all those cold runners and the components that are coming out of that machine, making sure it's running. Six axis robot. Now this is part of their QSSR process. Now let me get this right, which is which is quick, simple startup of robot robotization. So. Great machines, you want to be doing big, big batch runs, you want to take that manual intervention out of it, that's why they've got the, the, pro, the robot here, so that's part of their process. It's like a jigsaw, bringing all parts together. Yeah, it is what Fanuc are talking about here Brilliant. at the shows that we've been to around the world. It is all about the collaboration between all of their products, whether it be the robotics, the software, which we've seen this touchscreen control as well, which is very yeah. intuitive and easy to use, helps you monitor the process. Um, it is one solution here from one Fanuc. Well, you're monitoring the process because we've got the Link i2, which is a latest software. So you could run up to a thousand machines. I mean, how many machines shop over a thousand machines? But you could potentially run up to a thousand machines, monitoring them all, see how they're running, see in terms of the temperatures, injection volumes, and things like that. Real get, close monitoring. Getting precise components here on the Fanuc standard for Kuma 2021.